So I'm gonna now adjust the landscape a little bit more. And with my foreground element with these grasses, I cleaned it up enough so that there's a clean enough silhouette to it that I can use puppet warp. So just remind you of how that works. I just go to the layer. So this is for the grasses. And then say edit puppet warp, just like I did for my creature. And I can just make subtle adjustments, but I have to anchor it. I'm going to anchor it here on the bottom because I don't want those rocks to change. But then for each of these grasses, I can kind of move these independently. I don't really like how it's going right into his mouth so, or my creature's mouth. So maybe I can make it so it's shorter and not doing that. And I can bend this one away a little bit. And I can bend these a little bit more into it. And then just hit return. And sometimes little things can happen as you puppet warp that you might have to fix, like that little, that little tag that moved with it. And then I'll turn the overlay layer back to overlay. And yeah, that works pretty well with the backgrounds. I don't love the tangency of the grasses here with my... Um, with the side of my creature's leg, so I can use Puppet Warp to just move those slightly. So edit Puppet Warp. And this is just now the fine tuning. What I really want to show you is my favorite part of the creature scape and of concept settings. And that's something called texture overlays. So what we were able to do is we use dodge and burn directly on my creature. And then we use the, the non-destructive overlay layer for shadows underneath and behind the creature and the breath. And that overlay layer helped a lot to kind of create framing for our creature that was believable. Next because I can use that to put like a shadow under this tree too. But even though I dodged in lightness that kind of works with darker breath or, or lighter breath, there's no kind of cloud there. There's no change to the actual atmosphere. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually composite in texture overlays. And if you just do a Google image search, this works better in, in Google images than it does in Pixabay seeing what a non-destructive overlay is like. If you Google texture overlays, you'll see a lot of these kind of grayscale texture files, some of which you can buy, some of them are, are just able to use. These are going to be mostly just kind of flat textures, right? What we want is something that, that looks like misty clouds. And mist and fog is a very common overlay texture. In fact, this is from Pixabay. So if I, I can do this in Pixabay as well, but this one's kind of perfect. So I want to find where that's from. So let me log in. So this is great. <laughs> But you want something that's kind of like this. It doesn't matter if it's grayscale or not. You just want something that looks like misty clouds. I'm going to download it. It actually doesn't matter if I download it at a high resolution or not, which is why Google Image works too. So if I do texture overlay and then misty clouds, or you can do desert storm or something, you know, whatever you want, depending. This one's quite nice. Just grab it and then save it somewhere. I'm going to put it into my Proving Ground 1 folder. So 
So this is actually a public domain image, fantastic. And I want to download it. This is from Flickr. And I want, sure, I'll take the original 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. So I'm going to take these two. They came to my downloads. I'm just going to save them into my folder like I would any composite reference. Okay. Then I'm going to drag it on top of my image. and move it to the very top layer. I'm gonna stretch it to fit over everything. Put it on the very top. Then I'm gonna take its opacity way down. And you can see how now we have atmosphere. And I can also play with its blending mode. So I can play with overlay, but if I want that mist to really appear, I'm going to want to use something like soft light or pin light. And pin light works really well for this. You can see how that atmosphere is kind of in the image now. Now what if I want to control kind of where that, that misty cloud is? I'll just put it on normal mode. Let's see what soft light's doing. Yeah, soft light is nice. I can bring in multiples of it, different versions. This one is vignetted and darkened at the corners, which is kind of nice. Make sure it covers everything. Take its opacity down. And then you can play with its blending modes. So I can even duplicate it, make it normal mode, up its opacity just so you can see it, and I can internally composite with it. So I can find some nice bit of cloudy breath, select it, duplicate it, move it to where my creature would be breathing, right? And then composite it like I normally would with a big soft eraser at 100% opacity first to get rid of the hard edges. And then because it's just this kind of middle gray grayscale made for overlay mode, I can always just play with my direct adjustments to brighten it up. Don't need to worry so much about color unless I want to, but I can definitely work with the levels of it so it shows up. And then play with the opacity. And you see how now, unlike just dodging and burning, this gives me the sense of a puff of atmosphere that's affecting the environment around it. And I can play with my eraser at different opacities and allow my creature to, to kind of come through it in different ways. Nice mistiness. So once you start playing with atmosphere, you might see that it, it has just a lot of good effects. You can also move them down through your layers. So if I want it not to affect the foreground or my creature, I can choose it you know, just affecting what's in the middle ground and further back. And I can selectively erase from it. All right, and that's about it. So now to put it all together, just so I can have it in the video, even though we're going a little over the time.
what I want to do, let's see. is I want to post this assignment, save it the right way, and show you all the things you get credit for for your proving ground. So first, I save it as always as my PSD. So this is SP22 for spring 2022. Carl, always good to save with your name. Proving ground number one, Creaturescape, always good to give a description as a PSD. Next, I'm gonna save it as a copy, and this is what I can post to Canvas, I'm going to save it as a JPEG because I want it to be flattened. So I say File, Save a Copy, change the format down to JPEG, which gives me a lot of control over its size. I'm going to choose, this is a big file, I'm going to probably choose a 10 quality, and I'm hoping for a size that's five megabytes or fewer. So at 10 quality, it's seven megabytes. So I'm gonna go down to nine. But the surf first time you save as a JPEG is pretty good. So that's 5.2, that's a good size. I say, okay. Now I can close it. I make sure I know where all the work's saved. So that's where it is. Looks good. It's maybe a little bit too sharp in the foreground. So always kind of look at it. And I'm going to put a little bit of that texture overlay in the foreground, too. And remember, you can erase away from the texture as much as you want. So I'm just going to simply take a bunch of it. Or this foreground mist. Duplicate it from the texture overlay. change it to normal so I can see it, erase away from the top edge, first at 100%. This is just kind of mist coming in in the foreground. Pretty subtle. You see how it's softening the edges a little bit. I can even uh, warp it to make sure it covers the top of that rock. And then I can use my low opacity soft edge eraser to be a little bit more selective about where it comes through and where it doesn't. And I can also play with the levels. We have so much control. I can brighten the mist up. I can darken it. I think I just want it slightly brightened. You can see how much difference having some of this atmospheric texture does. Then I feel like I need a little bit over the creature. So I'm just going to take that breath layer, duplicate that, and move it over the body of the creature a little. And then erase away from that. So, so many ways you can adjust and work with this. And the more thoughtful you are about it, the better. Okay, so once you're happy with your creature scape, and it makes sense.